Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Brian Thatcher, and welcome to Mercy Unbound. It's a show that aims to provide hope, an avenue for healing, and one that will hopefully help you understand and then live the great mercy of God. With me today, I have a special guest, Father Franco Pinto. He's a Salesian priest, and he's the director of the Christa Ray School in Tampa. And uh, a few months ago, I had the chance to speak with him, and I thought it'd be a wonderful opportunity to tell you all the incredible things that are happening in Tampa in education, uh, Catholic education with the Salesians. And uh, Father, welcome to Mercy Unbound. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me, huh? Thank you. Before we start, um, as I mentioned, you're a Salesian. Uh, Don Bosco founded the order. Can you share with us a little who Don Bosco was and what the charism of the order is? Sure. Um, Don Bosco was a priest uh, in the 18th century. He was born, I mean, 19th century, he was born in 1815. Uh, and at the age of nine, he had a dream. He had a lot of dreams. At the age of nine, he had a dream that kind of told him exactly what his mission was going to be. And he deciphered it as he went along because it, as he was studying in the seminary, he looked at all these kids uh, coming into the city from the villages, from the rural areas, looking for jobs. They were abused, they were neglected, they were, they were really treated so badly that his heart went out to them and he said, what can I do to help these kids? And then they realized, he realized they were unchurched and they didn't go to catechism. And so he began to gather them together and then um, began to teach some catechism. And he came up with the motto that says, give me souls, take away the rest. Like what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world but suffers the loss of his own soul, basically. So catechism became his reason for uh, getting the kids together. And also because while they were with him, they were safe. Uh, and he he was dealing with the employers. He was de dealing with, uh, uh, with the people that interacted with the kids to make sure that they were not abused and uh, he kept them out of prisons. He also visited the prisons and, and brought kids out of there, took them on picnics. Um, all of them returned back to the prison system uh, because they loved him. And he, all he did was minister to their souls and whatever it, whatever it took to minister to their souls that's what he did so that's Don Bosco for us you know uh, it's interesting you mentioned about souls because the world we're so materialistic in this country and uh, and yet scripture tells us what what good does all that stuff do when you pass it's you can't take it with you right and that's that's some some of the things that we we tell the kids, yeah, we're preparing you for college, we're preparing you for life, but above that, above all, we're preparing you for heaven, um, giving you the virtues, what the secular world called values, but for us as, as Christians, the virtues that will hold you, uh, that will keep you uh, and your soul intact, you know, in such a way that you, you'll take sacraments seriously, you'll take marriage seriously, you'll take, I mean, these are, those are virtues that that will hold you in good stead. Don't something that you're not just going to give up because it's a little hard. Um, go to sacrament of confession regularly because we are all sinners. We need that. Um, uh, the soul is, uh, I mean, if you really look at it in a secular way, what what uh, you when you look at somebody, he oh he's got drive, but does he have soul? You know, does he have what it takes to go? So that is what we're talking about. It's that God given conscience that God given the thing inside of each one of us. If we, if we minister to that, if we take care of that, everything else falls in place. If we forget that, then we wonder what's happening to the world. Right. Uh, you're running, chasing stuff and uh, it's only stuff. What do you do with stuff? Yep. It's just stuff. You know, Father, you had mentioned about Don Bosco had many dreams. Um, the one I remember from years ago was about the two columns. Could you share that dream with us? Well, that's a classic. Uh, one of the dreams that Don Bosco had uh, later on in his life, uh, he dreamt of a ship um, being tossed around in the waves and um, it, it, there were, it was being attacked. It was being uh, um, fired at from all sides. And and in the dream, Don Bosco said that he could see that there were the, the pilot or the captain of the ship was somebody dressed with a long white robe. 
and that happened to be the Pope, the Holy Father. And, and he was trying to get the ship docked in between two huge pillars. On one pillar was the statue of our Blessed Mother, on the other was, a, was the Blessed Sacrament. It was a monstrance. And he was trying to get the ship there, but then he was being tossed all around the place. He was being attacked, uh, sim symbolism for the church today. Uh, and at one point, the Holy Father fell down. In other words, he was kind of shot or he, he was wounded. And then immediately after that, another, another person in a white robe came up uh, and, and began to guide the church. But it was leading the church in between the two pillars. And as soon as they got to the two pillars, they anchored the church, one to the Blessed Mother and the other to the Blessed Sacrament. And everything subsided and there was calm and there was all the enemy ships just disappeared or some were drowned. And, and that's, that's a symbolism for the church today if, or, and for any one of us. Uh, anchor ourselves between Jesus and Mary and we'll see, it will all be okay. We forget that, we forget. We, Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, Mary as his mother and as our mother. Um, powerful because it gives us the peace like the waters calmed yes blessed mother and yes. Eucharist, and then that gives us the inner peace that is indescribable yes uh and we we underestimate the power of our blessed mother she's a mother she uh, the mother of god you know i mean if if god could make his own mother wouldn't he make the best of the best i mean that's what he was i mean he was god he made mary he made that's why it's immaculate he made her immaculate he he made her the best and one of the most beautiful women i mean gave her all the gifts i mean if you could make your own mother wouldn't you make her the best mother in the world that's god being your mother i mean we have her awesome mother really powerful as ever made perfect in the image and likeness of god uh, made by god so she's not eternal um she's immortal but not eternal she was created but she still is powerful when she says to her son they have no wine he had no choice turn water to wine that's what he did um he has to listen to his mother so that's powerful having mother mary, mother mary on our side i think we'll be okay <laughs> you know father we're living in times where it seems our educational system is in total disarray um, all this new theories they're promoting and education in many ways, I think is watered down. And um, the Crystal Ray School has a model and you've had a lot of success with it. And I really would like you to share with us, tell us all about the school, what the model is and how, how effective is it? So the Crystal Ray School is, is a very Salesian idea, but it was founded by a Jesuit. Father Foley uh, in Chicago. Um, he, he envisioned uh, kids graduating from school, but also giving them some skills that they would need in the, work, in the workplace. Um, one of the things that we do in this, in our particular Christian race school run by the Salesians, uh, and I think all Christian race schools um, do it to a different degree. And one of the things that we do here in particular is we, if we do, just don't educate the mind. We educate the mind, but we also educate the soul. Um, because educating the a child just in the mind, um, you're ready to create a menace in society. That's what we believe in, if you don't educate the soul. Uh, so the faith is a big part of what we do. So um, the kids come to our school, it's, they're long days, really. The school begins at 7.30 in the morning. It doesn't end until 4.10 in the, in the, in the afternoon. Uh, what do they do? So the kids are with us for four days of the, in, in, on the school campus. And then on one day of the week, they go out to work. And not just any work. They have, I mean, it has to be a real white collar work kind of. So we have kids working at the, in the Department of Defense, working in uh, uh, um, Morgan Stanley, working on J.P. Morgan, working in the sheriff's office, working at the courthouses. I mean, they're, they're getting experiences that, you know, people wait to be interned. And here, <clears throat> they are actually working, getting paid for their work, and that when when they're getting paid goes to pay for their education. So technically, they're working their way through school. Um, uh, it's a great model. It's, it's I think it's capitalism at its best. When 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 uh, you have kids who 
uh, don't feel entitled that they, that they are working to pay for their education and, 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 and get somewhere in life. But uh, while they do that, um, we don't forget why we do that. That's the soul. So it's really a combination of uh, study, then work, real life experiences, and then faith. Would that be fair to say? That's fair, fair to say. So. Now, is it all boys or co-ed? No, it's a co-ed school. It's a co-ed school. Um, it's boys and girls. Um, to be in Australian school, you have to be under the poverty level. That's so um, these are kids that are not born with a golden spoon in their mouth. Um, the total salary, I mean, total income within the family has to be under 40,000 per family of four. So, so it's you, a lower socioeconomic that you're trying to pick up and raise up, but also teach the faith then. That's correct. Because education is a great, education helps change things. And sure. we hope their kids don't come to Crystal Ray. Yeah. That kids go to a different, better school. Hopefully, I mean, to a. But we will. We want to break that chain somehow, and give them the faith, give them what they need to be able to, to survive and 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 just be good Christians, honest citizens. So, yeah. interestingly, as you mentioned, you 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 must be partnering then with a lot of local businesses. Yes, we do. Um, one thing that we're looking at is now to see if we can start, because this is in Florida, so we can start in the hospitality business. Everything around here is hospitality. So far, Crystal Ray does not allow people to be in, in, in that industry, but we have people working around um, aerosonics, uh, making, making parts of the Department of Defense. Uh, this is a group of kids that flew all the way to Tennessee with the, with the, with the, uh, with the Army, with the military, uh, to, to refill a plane so the four kids were able to see how that happened in action and come back the same day on time for the end of school day from the flu from here to Tennessee to back on them. And these, these are kids having a fantastic experience and um, the local businesses would be not just mom and pop stores though it's it's bigger businesses than just mom and pop stores so they get they get real experience real life experiences with uh, uh, doing coding, like when they do coding for aerosonics, they do coding for uh, for another department, I forget some of these companies we work for. You know, another good fruit of all this is I can only imagine that you're building up people maybe who have a low self-esteem because they see other kids in society have everything and it builds them up and they really begin to realize how much Jesus and Mary love them. Oh, yes. Oh yes. In fact, we we've had parents from <clears throat> without uh, parents from Jesuit who came to me and says, "Father, we will pay the fees. We'll pay everything. Put our kids in your school so our kids can have the same experience." And I says, "No, this we don't want to lose the focus of why we're here. Our mission is to the poor and the privileged." Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I was out in Texas uh, just this last week speaking and. Uh, I, I saw a Crystal Ray school advertised and I thought, oh, I didn't know that they were out here. You're you're all over, aren't you? Yes, we are. We are 47 schools in the whole country. Um, we just, I think we just opened another one in Miami now. So awesome. another one that's coming up. That's now behind me is a statue of the Blessed Mother. Um, yes. Mary Help of Christians. Uh, where did that term originate? Uh, the Battle of Lepanto. Uh, when uh, we were being attacked and the, the Holy Father went under the title and defeated, defeated the, uh, the army, the, the Muslims, the Turks. Um, and from then on, uh, that title was existed But Don Bosco. Uh, when he wanted to have a title for Mary, for Mary, he chose Mary Help of Christians, that title, because she was a protector of all Christians. And we saw how we won that war. Um, at the Battle of Lepanto. It was a title that no matter where you go now in the Salesian world, that's the statue that you will see, Statue of Mary of Christians, even though that's the Statue of Our Lady of Grace behind me. <laughs> but but our, uh, Mary helped. Didn't that, uh, wasn't that really then tied into the rosary? Uh, yes, very much, uh, very much. One of, one of the things that that 
for me, Salishans promote is the rosary, is devotion of Blessed Mother through the rosary. And um, we also promote the devotion of the three Hail Marys before people go to bed at night. So at least you say three Hail Marys before you go to bed, Mother Mary will take care of you. So something we promote. Uh, the, there's no Salesian priest that will go to bed without having recited the rosary, without having prayed the rosary. Uh, that's and it's something we encourage everybody to do because there's power in that little, those beads are very, very powerful in every, in every which way. So, so Father, you've got good studies, good academics. You've got teaching them real life work habits and ethics and situations. And then you teach them the faith. Um, how successful is the model? We're in the fifth year right now. This is, sorry, we're in the sixth year of uh, this particular school. Uh, we have the, this June will be our third graduating class. Um, the kids that are coming back to, to see us um, uh, are very grateful, very appreciative for what we've given them. Not uh, while everybody is qualified to go to, to college, and some of them finish. Uh, at least the associate's degree before they leave from our school here. Mm. Uh, we would do our enrollment, but not everybody will finish college. We know that, but everybody has the, the certification to go on to college. So we have had about 90, 90% of kids go to college from our school, wow. and, and the, which is pretty high. And the other 10% have gone on to, to start businesses. So for all the, of the, in the two years that we have graduated people, people come back saying, um, Father, if not for this school, I would be in jail. Yeah. Well, you know, Father, I've traveled all over Africa, Central South America and things, and I've always felt in my heart that the key to this is education, which you're giving, but even more importantly, the faith for, to, you know, grow their soul. So it's an incredible uh, model. Yes, it is. Um, because what does it profit a man like, or a woman if he gains the whole world you have everything all the money in the bank you need but if you lose your soul it profits you nothing so it comes back to that and our, our motto is give me souls take away the rest we don't care about all the rest we'll help you give you the strength and the, the virtues you need to, to go through life but we'll give you virtues you need to get to heaven at the end that's, that's what we want because this, this thing is so transitory. Our life is so transitory. So. Father, as I mentioned, I saw the Crystal Ray advertisement in Texas, but how? what's your website? And uh, we're in the Tampa area. How would people reach you in yes. the Tampa area? And so we are, uh, the website address is www.mhctampa.org. That's Mary Abba Christians in short, Mary Abba Christians, Tampa.org. So www.mhctampa.org. And really anybody watching this all over the world should Google Christo Ray. Uh, Tampa Salesian High School. Yeah. And, and see if there's a school where they're at because uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a great model. Now, one thing, Father, I totally want to get back to in the Tampa is you've got an incredibly beautiful chapel. Could you share that with the people watching this or listening to the podcast yes yeah, so um, to, to get to that i'm going to give you a little history so we can get there right so it might be a little longer here um so when this campus was conceived in 1927 uh the reason was you know, there were fam fathers who went to fight in the world war and the kids were left orphans so Will be so by by, by 20, 1927, 28, they were about seven, eight, nine years old. And so we, we decided to take care of those kids. And with that began the, this whole vision that uh, that we had for the orphans. And then the Great Depression hit. And as soon as the Great Depression hit, uh, where do you go and what do we do? So we so we took care of orphans, we took care of kids and uh the, the we began with the school. The school evolved into becoming a a, a trade school, get, be, giving them trades, going whether it's drafting, printing, water mechanics, uh, fabrication, things like that. Well, what do we do while they're here? We never forgot the mission to save their souls. So to save the souls, we needed to have a chapel. So, um, but there was not enough 
enough money to build that chapel, that the church that we see, that pretty church that we have right now. It's a chapel. Uh, so one of the the halls is converted to a chapel, and then then uh, people saw that these kids really prayed and that and it helped them. And there's people who came back and told us, "Thank God for this this place." Um, anyhow, uh, and then in 1965, Father Molina finally this managed to raise enough money to build that chapel. And that chapel is gorgeous. It's one of the prettiest chapels, um, ancient chapels, I would call it, even though it's built in 1965. It's got a mosaic, a uh, beautiful mosaic of the, um, die, the the cathedral and the diocese, and then Mary help on this side. But every, if you look at how it looks like, they're all looking at Mary, the big statue of Mary right there, and Mary leading everybody to Jesus. So it is to Mary, to Jesus through Mary. So that's how it is. And then underneath is the tabernacle, uh, followed by the altar and all that good stuff. So, but the side altars have got mosaics too of Dominic Savio that showed us that, and, and to tell the kids that you can be a saint as well. He's a young kid, he's 15 years old, he became a saint. You too can. On the other one, we have Don, on the other mosaic, we have Don Bosco with leading kids. Um, to Mary, through Mary, to Jesus. Uh, so she's kind of the intermediary there. And yeah, I would encourage anybody, if they're visiting the Tampa area, to come to the grounds and look, pray at that chapel. And not only the beautiful chapel, but you've got a reliquary in the back, don't you? Yes, a very pretty reliquary in the back. We have, I think, relics of all the apostles too over there. I mean, we've finally got uh, one of the students to to zoom in on those relics and find out the names of the, uh, and then we have, I think most 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 of the, the the apostles are here along with all, you know, a thousand saints, uh, and then we also have the a copy of the shroud of Turin. That's really pretty. I mean, if you want to see something that's identical to the shroud, this is the place for you. It's really pretty. Yeah. Father, any other closing thoughts um, before we wrap up today's show regarding the school? And your... Yeah, so while we help the kids get to heaven, give them everything, we can never forget that we need to get to heaven ourselves. So if we are driving the bus, if we are getting to heaven, then the kids along with us will get to heaven. Um, and people listening to us, what's the point if you don't get to heaven? So um, stay faithful to our Blessed Mother. Uh, stay faithful to the sacraments. Go to, we have the tools we need to become saints. And the only regret you'd have getting older is that of not being a saint. So might as well start now. So it's a little message for all of us today is be a saint. You're called to be a saint. Expect nothing less than that from yourself. Raise the bar. Be a saint. Father, Father give us that website address again for um, the school. It's mhctampa.org. Right www.mhc mhc stands for mary hubble christians tampa.org yeah. well father i want to thank you so much for joining me today on mercy unbound people um, incredible school model concept uh, against the grain so to speak of today's society but mm -hmm. effective it's working and even more importantly the kids are getting their way learning about the importance of working to get to heaven so Father, would you mind closing us uh, with a little prayer today for all those that will watch or listen to the show? Sure do, sure do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless everything that we do. Bless us. You made us in your image and likeness. Help us always be faithful to that image and likeness that you made us. Keep us faithful to you, no matter what. Give us the strength we need to be strong when the world, the devil takes the upper hand. Help us always to smile, knowing that you are always there besides us. Mother Mary, we ask you to accompany us. Walk with us, journey with us. Mary, help of Christians, pray for pray us. For us. Name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Well, again, Father, thank you for joining me on Mercy Unbound People. This is a cause for hope. The future looks bright with the work of the Salesians here all over the country and the world. And may God bless your work, Father. And people subscribe to the shows, 
share this show with your friends and contacts, and let's spread the good news and the love of Our Lady and Jesus for all of us. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the video portion. The podcast can be heard at anchor.fm slash drbryan, B-R-Y-A-N, Thatcher, T-H-A-T-C-H-E-R, and on all the major podcast forums. I would love to speak at your church or conference, and please consider supporting our efforts to spread the truth to a hurting world. Thank you again. And for more information, go to the website at drbryanthatcher.com.